<laughs> That's it. Hey! Hello. Welcome to... I nearly said Jarvis Gear. Welcome to Stars Without Number Ardent. This is going to be my uh, new show on this bit for a little while. I'm just making sure everything works. It's all new. It's all new. It's all new. All of this. All of this. Not this. Not this. But all of this is all new. And uh, I, I want to make sure it kind of didn't just be like one horrible like... You know that little image that shows up when it tries to load like an image and the website gives up? It's just all like... Burp. But, welcome to Stars Without Number. We are... It's pretty much a, a by-the-book Stars Without Number game. But you, you know me. You know, little, little, little twists and things. How is everyone? Can't complain. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty darn good. I just took a nap. A power nap. It was like... I can't power nap, man. Was, listen, I just add the word power to make me feel to, to, to lie. <laughs> I'm, I'm not groggy right You're now. You're trying to like oh, placebo man. yourself. Like, it was a power nap. <laughs> Look at that. Acting. That's what you Beautiful. get here. Beautiful. So, without further ado, let the games begin. <clears throat> this uh, campaign takes place in a, a region, of space, uh, region of space called called simply uh, Ardent. Around 160 years ago, a colony arc ship loaded with cryogenically free frozen humans arrived on a planet which they soon named Novus. The ship worked almost exactly correctly. It was designed to send humanity to the stars, but it did lose track of where it came from. Nobody on that ship knew where Earth was in relation to where they are now, they don't know anything much about their homeland due to uh, cryogenic sickness and, and, and such things. So they did what they were tasked to do as, as humans sent off in the stars, they started colonizing. And for the next 160 years, Novus spread from being the capital city, uh, a cap from like one colony ship to the center of a system, uh, multiple system, uh, galactic sort of empire sort of thing. I mean, saying galactic empire has a little bit more troubling implications than it necessarily does. But there are some troubling impl implications because other ships that have been colonized now that it's been quite a long time and multiple generations have been born on planets have been pushing for independence as they want to do. But everything uh, goes back to Novus. Every new planet colonized in the name of Novus is part of the Novus Concord, is part of the group, is part of a united uh, a united group of planets and nations but it did kind of get a little sticky first of all humanity was when it started humanity was all together they were all together colonizing the systems and then of course as they do humans fight amongst themselves and then around 40 50 years ago they realized that they weren't the only intelligent life form in this area of space and they encountered an alien race known as wraiths well, that is what Humans call them. No real communications attempts have ever successfully worked. At least that's what the broadcasts would lead you to believe. And humanity has been reunited in some places over a defense against this alien menace while trying to colonize their land. And while they try to take back theirs. Sounds very human. But... Other planets still push for independence. In areas far, far away from the Wraith-controlled space, things just keep on rattling by, as they always did. And that's where uh, our camera pans now. To a club. To a typical, uh, to a typical e evening in, in a club. There's music playing. That's very loud! Holy shit. Uh, there's music playing. There's people. You guys are sitting at the bar. Whereas, sort of behind, uh, there's seating areas, and then behind frosted glass, there is a dance floor that is filled with people. A lot of people who are just trying to, to enjoy themselves, because you are currently uh, on a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of leave from your last job. Now, I, I say leave, you've only really been stopped here for a couple of hours. You got off the ship, you went to the club. You are currently at... Uh, a place known as Corvus Scepter. It is actually in the Nova system. It's 
uh, a it is more or less a space station uh, based around mining the asteroids nearby. And it's the perfect place if you're just hopping into the system and preparing to hop out again, which is what your ship does most of the time. Your, your ship is a, a small ship that does odd jobs, so there's no real reason to get further into the, the, the system than you need to. You uh, four are sitting there at the club, at the bar currently, although you can uh, change your minds if, if you need to, where the rest of your crew are currently further into the club actually uh, talking to the person who hired you on your last job, where you went to a planet called Jorinth, and you had, there was a whole thing. It would be really interesting. So many funny things happened. There were bonding experiences and moments. No. Uh, so you guys, sitting at the club, lights flashing, but in this area it's not obnoxious. You're more or less in sort of like a trendy bar over here. Over there is where all the dancing and, and, and stuff's going on. And it's still kind of busy. Uh, why don't we start by uh, saying who you all are. Scott, Scott. describe yourself. <clears throat> so, um, uh, what is it? Davis Nielsen? Is um, he's actually an officer in the um, in the the military of the area, so um, uh, I don't remember exactly what his position is on this ship, but that's because I think it was just recently changed. Um, so was it? Recently you are that you are essentially the commanding officer, but you are not the captain. Correct. But it's what this ship is only has a crew of six people, so yeah. your your roles are where you sit. Mm -hmm. You you don't have any sort of official thing going on aside from the captain and the pilot, more or less. And uh, one of them would very much say that they are the ship's engineer every time if asked. Hmm. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, anyways, the uh, he's uh, probably sitting in this nightclub. Um, considering like uh, everything that they've gone through recently and whatnot, it usually takes a little bit of time to relax. Kind of sits there a bit tense. So, considering we just kind of like pulled into port or whatever, mm. um, there's not hasn't really had a chance to re uh, to relax. So, probably sitting there, kind of like half day, staring out into people that are dancing or just like enjoying the nightclub in general, um, while like really, really nursing a drink, kind of like distant. Mm. Um, what so are like, you drinking? Um, I imagine he is having. Because he's because he's not fully relaxed yet. He's drinking a, a beer. Nothing. He's just one yeah, of those. Yeah, you're starting like you you you're here. You're yeah. going to relax at some point, so you have a beer. Yeah. If my jam comes on, I'd be like, "Give me a pina colada," you know. But your jam um, is not on right now. My jam is not on. So it's playing so, yeah. like very repetitive, bassy, synthy music, which is yeah. kind of typical in these kind of stations because these this it's it's literally uh, this uh this, this station has an entire habited area. You've not even gone there. This is still mm -hmm. in the docks. It's called Corvu Scepter because it is a a, a, a sort of a shaft of uh, docking areas and, and some businesses and then a habitable sort of uh, orb at the top. You, you're still in the sort of engineering maintenance areas of this, of this space station. So the people around you are probably not so much locals unless they're locals who want to get into sort of like... <laughs> get into sort of like the spacing area. But you, you're all spacers. You're all people who are probably all in the same situation. But those oh, guys over there are a couple more boys. drinks into their situation. There's just people that want to come and see the bad boys of space. Some yeah, well, there absolutely are. Are people who are like, so where did you just come from? Oh, that's so yeah. interesting. So so anyways, um, uh, Davis is in his uh, early th early to mid thirties. Um, he's Hispanic. So, um, you know, he's just like I say, kind of sitting there. He's uh, very clean, uh, like clean face, clean, well-kept, uh, tight hair. Uh, takes seriously his position, so it's um, you know, uh, very, very, almost looks uh, upset or or distracted right now mm -hmm. because he is he's distracted. Next up, sitting next to him, Neil. Who are you? And what are you uh, drinking? <clears throat> uh, so, <clears throat> next to Davis Nielsen sits uh, sits Jason Finch. He's. Uh, He's a sort of pale, bookish-looking guy. Um, he's from Brim. He's not really someone that you would say is of a descent. Brim is difficult to tell. They get a variety from there. The he looks whole, like your average Caucasian. Yeah, sort exactly. Of the whole of of like this colonized uh, uh, world was colonized by such a different group of, of races. Like, going by Earth races doesn't necessarily uh, stamp it as, as easily as you'd like to, 
but there's definitely places that have more culture, such as like Pike, which has a lot more of a sort of like Hispanic culture. Uh, Novus is a little more typical or American, whereas like Brim is kind of like not really got any of that. It didn't really adopt an Earth culture, you know. So he's got slicked back, fairly dark hair, but with like some bits that drop down. He's clearly not that bothered, and he's sitting there with his back to the bar, watching the people with just a water actually. Um, and he's he's clearly intently watching people and sort of getting caught up in their drama and like if there weren't drunk people here they'd be like dude come on stop, stop you're staring. you're watching you're watching the guy opposite who's very clearly like an engineer in their jumpsuit and, <coughs> and the girl being like so you're from space right where did you last come <laughs> you're watching that interaction and like their crew making fun of him on like the other side in like a seating area because they're having like a meal like yep. It's very funny. It's a good, it's a great place to people watch if you want to watch spaces. Alrighty. So, Ian, who are you, what are you drinking? So, okay, next to Jason Finch is a um, young woman, early 20s probably. Uh, she looks remarkably average in... Um, remarkably most... average. Remarkably average, yes. Um, Fairly short and slightly messy, dark brown hair. More the sort of thing you'd expect to see on a teenage boy, to be honest. Brown mm. eyes. She's got a few freckles on her face. She generally looks very much like um, a typical, again, Caucasian um, country girl, you might say, in terms of a um, few freckles. Very Pleasant. simple looking. No, yeah. no, no real defining features. Even having short hair isn't really a defining feature. Yeah. You know. she, she's pleasant but not memorable that would probably yeah. be the best way yeah, to describe it exactly, she, she looks neutral She if she wasn't here she would blend in Yeah. actually okay. here she looks a little weird because a lot of spaces uh, depending on the ship kind of de decorate themselves a little bit more and, and stuff like that Yeah. Um, her clothing is maybe a little bit on the odd side in the fact that on over the uh, fairly plain grey shirt and jeans she's got um, a big brown trench coat on and um and gloves on but other than that there really isn't much that yeah. stands and it's out. pretty it's pretty hot in here just because of the body heat so it's like a little weird yeah that is a bit weird um so she 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 has a pint of beer next to on the bar there's also a couple of empty shot glasses she's you came that. in and you started yeah and she is just chatting to anyone around her that party members r random patrons of the bar she's Let's say bumpy. you're chatting to the bartender at a moment. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. being very talkative to anyone who we talk to her, basically. All right. And last up, of the, these members of the crew who are currently sitting, like you all walked in and you, you just sat together because you all walked in for now, uh, is uh, Will. Who are you? What are you drinking? So my character is Tomas Reyes. He is actually from uh, Pike. Um, he is wearing probably just like his nicest clothes so a pair yeah. of jeans and a t-shirt with a yeah. stain on it like it's just it probably has like a faded like band logo type thing yeah just totally just very 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 casual um he is a larger guy he's about six four very broad shoulders he just looks big um kind of messy black hair he is about 36 years old um he's about sitting there the number so well here's the thing here's the thing is, the yeah. years are based off Novus years, which are exactly 365 days. Mm. But he's not from Novus. There's exactly. a reason why they why the ship went to Novus. Novus is for you guys almost a perfect facsimile of Earth, aside from the continents. Like day, year, atmosphere is all exactly the same. Fair enough. So Scott, you're muted if you're trying to sass. You're still muted if you're, you're trying to sass. If you're trying to sass. Well, who right. knows? Mr. This, is, this is Scott's new thing, muted sass. See, I yeah, do that is. sometimes on his show, and he's like, what are you saying, Ollie? And I'm like, yeah. I'm just I'm just mouthing things to, like, be dramatic. <laughs> I'm being dramatic. Listen, I, just, I just miss Erin, so I had to bring her back. Oh. <laughs> you can let her leave. It's okay. She doesn't want to be in space. <laughs> <sighs> um, so he's definitely drinking. So there's probably an empty shot glass too, because he probably did a shot as well. Um, but he's definitely drinking like the fruitiest with an umbrella drink in it possible, because he's totally the kind of guy where it's like, uh, I don't care how girly this is. My masculinity speaks for itself. He's just just literally drinking the girliest, fruitiest 
drink possible. Um, he's probably not being super um, social, but not like antisocial. He, he'll talk when he's talking. You're, you're drinking, and you probably drinking. you probably like react to the conversation Rain's having, whereas yeah, those two Rain are kind of doing probably their own dragging thing. you into the conversation. Okay? Yeah, and then like you drop back out of it after a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's exactly that's exactly it. Cool. The bartender is is interested enough in holding a conversation, but you know. It isn't isn't giving you all the like oh so where are you from blah 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 it doesn't care that much because he sees people come and go from station from from ships all the time he does ask what your ship does and if you do tell him uh, your little ship the magpie does odd jobs you are an odd job ship we sort of a lilt towards adventuring you find missing people you occasionally do like VIP cargo things you uh, will 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 check out to see if like situation you do this kind of like weird odd job thing where there isn't really a group of people who do that so your ship actually is you almost always has a job to do because not many people are willing to spend their like the the fuel money and the crew money and the ship money to do like look for missing people and stuff like that it would almost be like a detective ship if it was run a little better <laughs> but it's a little more it's a little, it was a little more messy. Um, if he asks, like, what does the ship do? I take it in an understanding of differently. So I go, oh, the ship can do a lot of things. I start explaining, like, literally, like, the speed the ship can go. Like, literally, just... He nods along with it, understanding, yeah. but doesn't really, like... He doesn't... You know, if you're having a conversation with someone who cares, they ask qualifying questions. Yeah, he's, he's just not like... doing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Save the yeah. end, please. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And range just like a button. Oh, so that's what that bit does, sort of thing. <laughs> yes, because uh, Tom, uh, Thomas, I've got it. I've got it shortened to Tom on the overlay because your Twitter yeah. handle is so long, <laughs> it Sorry. wouldn't fit. Um, is uh, actually the oldest sitting crew member bar the captain, so he knows a lot about the ship. It's basically his ship. Whereas, uh, Rain a little longer than, uh, Davis and Jason, but they've both quite short time on the ship. You've done a few jobs, probably a year, maybe less, uh, stuff like that. Awesome. So after, you know, you're having this conversation for about two or three minutes, a lot of time for the bartender to... So, so sorry, the captain, what's the captain's name? I guess we have to reference them. Captain's name is Mickey. Mickey, thank you. M C K. Uh, uh, he he like excuses himself to go like to another group of people and serve them drinks. Uh, that conversation goes long enough with you like describing all the specs of your ship, uh, and then you can kind of go and, and, and sit and uh, listen to the rest of uh, what's going on. A large ship uh, rumbles past outside where you can you can hear it. The whole bar shakes like all the glasses uh, actually noticeably shake as uh, someone docked off the ship, clearly, like, too close to the ship. We're well, not close enough to be any sort of danger. And, like, some people in the dance floor, like, dramatically, like, laugh. And, like, people who have clearly been here a couple of times know this happens. Mm. All right. After, after that happens, uh, the two of our crew members uh, are walking back towards you. You imagine that... Opposite you is this frosted glass and the dance floor. They kind of walk in from the dance floor where there's kind of like a doorway in there. Not doorway, it's just like it does. It isn't there. Um, and they are uh, Mickey Trick and Anna Xavier. Uh, Mickey is your captain. You wouldn't think it. He. The first thing you notice is the Hawaiian shirt. It's very tacky. It even it, it, even here where there's a lot of people with bright colours, he's wearing this very tacky Hawaiian shirt that is. Uh, not actually as faded as it maybe should be for how old it is, because he spends all his time in a tin can. Um, he is fairly old. He's at least in his 60s. And actually, in in general, people, humans live to around 120 in most places because of far better medicine, far better, like, social care and stuff like that. But he spent his entire life on a tin can, on ships and other things. So he actually looks more his age compared to us than most. His hair is almost completely white and he's actually not that balding. It's quite nice. 
Tom, Tom, as you know, he he actually spends some of his paycheck on hair restoration. Um, he is, you know, shows a little bit of of the wear and tear in his face. He walks with a very definite limp that Jason is is aware is because he spends too much time in space. It's sort of uh, not great for the legs, and um, is walking over, uh, checking some things on a compad. Compads, imagine like a, a chunkier sort of iPad, sort of tablet sort of thing. He's checking some things on that, laughing as Anna walks uh, beside him. Anna is a big, strong woman. You can tell she's big and strong because she's pretty much just wearing like uh, a vest and sort of like, not jeans, like cargo pants type things, but you can see the muscles and the, and the notable tattoos. Her hair is long and black and it's shaved on the sides. And she's like laughing a little bit, but it's clear that like R Mickey made a joke and she's laughing to be polite, and she maybe even flashes a look to like Rain. Like, um, she looks a little bit strange because she usually has guns on her, but you didn't take your guns down to this bar because that would be even weirder. And very noticeable about her is a uh, cross tattoo with like wings coming off it uh, right here, which is noticeable because Christianity and a lot of the Earth faiths are very, uh, they're not as big in in this part of space. It was I, I was wondering if that was you about to ask a question, Scott? But you were just you were just uh, being the hands for my. I was, I was just brushing aside the the nonsense. That's all. Okay, sure. Well, you were talking about Christianity and all those other faiths. And I was just like, eh. oh, I thought you were like this idea. We live in we live in space. There's aliens. Your 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 ancient text means nothing anymore. And it's a very 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 it's a very ancient text. Like, it it's very garbled. So like most of the uh, Earth religions. You wouldn't I'm, know. I'm sure it's conformed. Like, no, uh, they made aliens too. It was, it was they made place. Novas for us to find and stuff like yes. that. Yes. Yes. Um, mm. uh, so she walks over. She picks up one of the extra shots that Rain has ordered, and uh, drinks it, and just sort of like doesn't sit on the bar. Like leans by it, and Mickey comes over and's like, "Well, looks like it's gonna be another round on me because we just got paid up the wazoo." I tell you, I don't want to see another Jorinthy Moorhound again. It, I don't, I don't. If if anyone wants us to go back to Jorinth, I'm just, I'm just gonna say no. We got enough blasting from the sand on the ship. We got those things slobbering all over the place with the the, the slime. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. I'm getting too old for that kind of job. But anyway, next round of drinks on me. And he goes. They always pay on time, though, Captain. They always pay on time. I, you know, their planet's a shithole. But, you know, they are organized at the very least. Ugh. And he, like, lean. He sits very, he sits like old man sit. Like, uh. <laughs> well, I'm not going to complain about another round on you, Captain. But we got another job ready, you say, or? I know where we're going to be going next to uh, talk about someone about another job at the very least. All right, well. Better get those drinks in now, then, before we have to head off again. Yeah, we're not gonna have long of a of a little bit of shore leave here, you know. Not even Probably time not. for me to get the guitar out, go around a bit. Not the guitar again, please. You can I'm have the guitar. Out. We'll set off tomorrow morning. You can guitar out here all you want. I'm sure they'll. Love <laughs> no one's gonna hear it in here. Come on. You have the whole of Koru to play your- you you could busk on the street. I don't care, don't get arrested. But I don't <laughs> care what you do, come back tomorrow morning, we'll ship off, ship off. I mean, we don't have any repairs to do to the ship, right, uh, Tom? He, uh, shakes his head now. Then we're good to go tomorrow, you can enjoy yourselves, and, uh, you know, I think the next job's gonna be drama-free, so, it'll be nice. Nice and easy, nice paychecks. I wouldn't worry about it. If we're leaving tomorrow, Captain, I might as well just get back on board and do a full systems check to make sure everything is going to be online and good to go. I understand the mechanics are working well, but maybe we should just see check that the programming, fine. all the. Yeah, go ahead. That's what you're going to do. I'll join <laughs> you. And he like just chugs the rest of his cocktail and puts it down. Uh, yeah, I see him chug his cocktail. I guess I'll finish mine but uh despite the fact that i still have like half my beer left because i've been um nursing it, mm. it it takes me three sips not one big chug so because my character is not typically a, a chugger of drinks yeah. so it's kind of like glug, 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 glug. yeah it, i know exactly what you mean the, the failed chug yep. yeah 
Yeah, it's it's the Mathis Chuck, you know, like like oh man, there's there's like See, three I, of water I wanted here. to make a joke about Ooh. myself, but I actually can and do chug drinks. No, no, that's that is a Mathis Chug. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> and you uh you two head off. Uh, do any of the rest of you go with? A Anna's like uh Anna says the magpies sung fine every time. It's it's it doesn't need anything. Be sure, go and check the numbers for like the tenth time. As you go. Well, if those two have been boring going back to the ship, Jason or Annie, you want to join me? I'll go get the guitar. We can go find a corner to stand on and have a good, good, good old sing along. Anna, Anna like looks at Jason like, no, I think we have. Uh, I'm gonna drink and party. Nah, makes sense, makes sense. I'll get another round in before I head off then. Jason, you joining me? Uh, yeah, you know, um, I didn't finish those samples uh, we took from the hounds. And uh, yeah, I, I heard that um, if you if you leave them too long, they go off. Yeah, um, no fridge on the magpie, you know. No, no. Uh, yeah, that, that sucks. Yeah. Well, no, nah, you're, you're fine. You go do that. I'll, I'll get a guitar. I'll sing, I'll sing to my own playing then. Right. Hound samples. Anna, Anna just like orders uh, with, with the free lot that Mickey's getting uh, some some good whiskey and just sort of like sits and is like, well, you can you can do what you what, like, like, like Mickey said, don't get arrested. Don't get in trouble. I'm not going to be out there to defend you. You know me. I don't get in trouble that easy. <laughs> she, 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 she gives the same look that Scott gives. <laughs> I, I just I, I down another um, another shot and then and you head back to the ship. Yeah, to get the guitar. heading back to get the guitar and go find a corner to stand on and sing. This that's funny. I was saying that's funny. So the two of us walk off. You're all like, going towards the ship. He's jogging yeah. after us, and then she pulls up the rear. So it's just the captain sitting there by himself and no, he, 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 him and Anna. Yeah, you know, I thought she was going to do something separate as no, well. No, she's she's oh, going to okay. stay in the club. Gotcha. For okay. now, at least. I just uh, to me uh, in my mind, I was like, so the captain sits at the table and everybody. <laughs> Sorry. So Sorry. Uh, it's quite. Uh, you you leave the club. The club was the closest place here uh, to to the um, to the ship where you're docked. Uh, this part of Corporate Deceptor, the actual like sort of the the engineering parts, the ship docks, and all all the businesses that build around a ship dock is pleasant enough to walk through. It's actually got a uh, the, the the roof above your heads has little bits of glass that you can see uh, the, the you can actually there's light streaming through even though it is night to your ship time because uh, it's currently like sort of facing the sun of this system. Uh, the thing about these sort of uh, uh, systems even if they're mostly based for like asteroid mining and things that you wouldn't necessarily think of is they are actually quite nice you know, there's a lot of greenery. There's like a line of uh, of trees and shrubs in in the middle of this walkway, and there are all sorts of businesses. There are, you know, uh, weapon shops, clothes shops, these sort of things uh, along the way. Uh, but mostly around this time because it is ship time late, but it is you know day kind of is uh, a lot of people partying, a lot of people drinking, a lot of like groups. Uh, getting together, you see like people who have clearly just left their ship and are doing the same thing as you, and are like, okay, there's where we need to go, and, like point to the club you're just leaving. When you get to your uh, berth, where you, where you get to see the magpie, the magpie is sitting there uh, being refueled. There's a big freaking uh, tube shoved into the into the back of it. The magpie is a small, neat little ship. It is quite old. It's actually older than. All of you. <laughs> it's actually older than all of you. Uh, it is a pike-built ship, which means it's kind of quite uh, quite sleek, but not to the sense that it looks alien. It still looks human. It's it's sleek. It's it's kind of got a rounded edge, a rounded front, a bit more of a square back, and it's kind of like a thin uh, rectangle sort of thing. On the back, it's engines. It's got all these uh, service clamps attached to it. Uh, you actually can just walk up to it here because uh, you. Uh, no, scratch that. Reverse it. You have to go to an, an, an airlock. You can see the ship through the window. You have to go through an airlock to walk through because you were planning to not stay very long, so you didn't get in a more permanent berth where if you, it's easier to make up. bigger... Uh, yeah, you could go into a dry dock where it's easier to make bigger repairs. You're literally just like, boom, refueling. Uh, and the, air, um, the airlock fits to the cargo bay. It's actually 
perfect. Um, there's usually like standard sizes fits perfectly. You can just walk right through into your cargo bay when you put do the password. It's when you realize that all four of you left, but you. Uh, yeah. It also occurs to me. I forgot to say that um, Jason's in his forties. So it Early is. 40s, it's but... just about like as old as you. It's around that kind of age. The ship doesn't have. Uh, it doesn't say when it was made in like the ship or in like the. Um, usually, it's in the metalwork, like w when this thing was made, so you can check it. It's not got most of that aside from the old, newer things that Tom's added, because Tom knows that this ship was specially built. It's not. It's not un you unique in that it's got anything super crazy going on, but it was. It's not off the. It's not off the model uh, ship that's got mo other versions of it. This is the magpie. It's the only magpie out there. So you can get back in through the uh, through the cargo bay. Your cargo bay is mostly empty. It's got a small cargo bay. This is the kind of ship like you can imagine from a lot of uh, fantasy sort of things where there is. There, there, there. You know, a lot of fantasy uh, sci-fi things have you know that small kind of kind of shitty cargo ship like the Millennium Falcon, like the Firefly. It's got that sort of thing. You've got a cargo bay, and the big the the ship has two floors. Most of the the bottom floor is cargo bay, and then there's sort of the engines and the reactor, all that sort of thing behind. You can go from the cargo bay up to the. Uh, uh, you're probably going to the bridge to do all the the numbers, Davis. Jason is going to his room, which serves as a medical uh, bay. There are only uh, three rooms here. Uh, only three, what's it, crew quarters, not including the captain's quarters. And Jason's is on its own, with no one else sharing it, because he does the... Uh, it serves as a medical bay, but not to the extent that you actually rules-wise serves as a medical bay. It's just, that's where you're going to keep all the drugs, all the triage, the other bed is used to treat slight wounds and stuff. So that's where you go. Rain probably just takes a couple of steps in, picks up the guitar, walk a couple of steps out. Yeah. How many um, uh, crew can this ship comfortably uh, house? You can comfortably hold one more person. So seven total? Seven total comfortably. It could, it, you could easily jury rig more. You have had times where there's more people. There's like, VIP and, and uh, if there was like a VIP or something like that, but seven is the the comfortable. So so the crew quarters, the, the three areas we're looking at the little map we have here, those are each for two different people. They're each for two. So it's uh, you and Tom and Rain and yep. Anna share. Uh, but Jason has his own, which serves as. I, I was gonna say who has their own who has their own room. Then? J Jason has his own because <laughs> they need he uses that space to also uh, be medical stuff. Mm -hmm. Needs does, does that does that make sense? It, it is what is official. It is not okay. necessarily where you are sleeping every time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So it, that makes those it are like... Because, because more than just... lab in there. I understand what you're saying. More than just beds, it's also well, your well, personal yeah. storage. That's like that's like a medical bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's I understand. Where because the, um, the, the space in those rooms is, is not that big. You don't spend a lot of time in there. It's more or less yeah. beds and a couple bit of storage space. Yeah. And the last question, I'm sorry. Um, I know that there's the two different airlocks. One of them is obviously like the lift for the gra for the cargo. The other one's like the... When we do these quick uh, docks, I imagine it's the communal right, area right airlock. Right now, you're actually going back into the cargo one. Oh, okay. Because it this is more... It, it just was easier. Yeah, yeah, so it depends on whichever... Wherever depends it where is you're going, which is why you okay, have cool. to. Okay, the, cool. the second one's like easier yeah. to like hop in and out. Where is that floor plan? I remember you sent one. Uh, it is in hey. your handouts. Roll 20, yeah, it's handed to me. I don't 20. have one for the uh, uh, audience, but I will probably uh, yeah, uh, post, it, post it on Discord. You know, uh, you're not is. missing much. It looks like you're uh, it, at some it, sort of corporate briefing and somebody is, threw a... <laughs> it is exactly enough to serve, and I did not put more effort in it than that. That's yeah. the trick. Yeah. It, it, it looks like I wanted a, a you to be able frame. to see where things were in the ship, but I didn't want to actually put. Yeah. I'll tell you, if I was like writing a website, it looks like a wireframe somebody would send me. <laughs> like, if, it, and this yeah, is what it, it does. looks like. Look like oh, thanks. Out of curiosity, where's the link between the upper and lower deck? Uh, sort of at the edges of the cargo bay. I, I realized after I sent that, it doesn't go on. Okay. Uh, it's up. Uh, sort of between the cargo bay and engineering, more or less, uh, or on the edge of cargo bay. Okay, so right in the center. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right in the center, there's there's two... Uh, there's oh, like I'm going to post it in the Ardent spoilers, okay? Yes. Okay. Good call. So, you get back on the ship. You, uh... You two, uh... Davis and Tomas, 
you you do your you don't even need to do any sort of rolls. The ship is is purring fine. There was some like emergency things that needed to be done because too much sand got in a bunch of vents and also kind of bashed up the cargo room door because you had to actually land on like a desert and like not good, but you know, not actually that hard to deal with, Thomas. That was just busy work. It was just like if I don't do it now, I gotta do it later. Yeah. Um so everything's more or less purring fine. And uh, you, there, there's currently no in in your bridge. So the bridge has is is a, a little room. The top of the ship is usually thinner than the the, the lower side because uh, just how the ship is designed. Uh, the chamber has a chair for each job. So there's four chairs, uh, five chairs, and the captain's chair, which is in the, not in the middle. It's on the wall closest to the middle, or near the wall closest to the middle, which is bigger and has a bunch of sub um, other features. The chairs themselves have the uh, they're, they're old tech. If you if you occasionally get on another ship, which does, does happen to you guys because you've got to like talk to other people, you would realize that like the tech in like these chairs to help deal with g-forces and help deal with uh going through punch drive drills and things like that um is is very outdated it literally has these big sort of like gyroscopic wheel things on it so that the the, the chair and it's all attached to the spine of the chair so that you don't die uh most of the time uh <laughs> and what was i gonna say you're poking away in there doing all the the things and you don't nothing nothing weird comes up uh, in, in the ship. Oh, that's what I was saying. There's usually a, a screen that says where your destination is uh, and usually also what your job is and that has not been filled out because he's not done it yet. He isn't on a ship. Rain, you go off and you're going to play your music. You're not going to start trouble. You're just going to play some music. I'm just going to play some music. Just go so... play a little music. Oh. This is when I check and I believe there is a performance skill. There is perform, yeah. Roll. First roll of the game is guitar. First roll, yep, excellent. Modifier zero. Yeah, go, go, go. All right, let's see if he rolls what he typically does. I assume this would be a charisma. Um, yes. Charisma. Waiting for that's, it. Oh, that's, that's, that's exactly a pass, more or yeah. less. That is, you go out. You uh, find a street, like a little corner at a bit of an intersection in this sort of area of the station. You start playing your music. You n Nothing good happens, nothing bad happens, really. A couple of people stop, but no one is, like, hand throwing money at you. Mostly because most money is digital, so it doesn't really work that way. And you didn't, like, set up a QR code or anything like that. You just, that's, like, a whole bunch of effort you weren't bothered to do. And no one's a bot interested in doing like someone buys you a drink from, from from like someone nearby, but it's not like a beer. It's like a sort yeah. of juice and like a squeezy thing. And when I when I like finish a song, if there's anyone standing around, I'll have a chat and then go back. To yeah, exactly. You're you're you're, more, you're just sort of just, uh, have a bit of fun having a chill chat. time. Yeah. So next morning, the ship uh, you're in the ship preparing to uh, to to leave. Everyone comes back overnight. Uh, you sleep for like the rest of the cycle, but like it, what you weren't wasn't very long. It's like probably ten hours exactly from when you were at the club, when Mickey is starting to like set things up to leave. But you're probably going to leave in about an hour, uh, where he sets in the destination, which is going to be uh, Shield, which is in the Pike system, uh, yeah. which is not a surprise. You spend a lot of time bouncing back and forth to Pike, and this is a Pike built ship, and my Mickey is from Pike. So it's not a surprise that you're heading off back there. And uh, Tom, as you know, that this ship was de very much built in S.H.I.E.L.D. Because S.H.I.E.L.D. is mostly a shipwright. So that's like the main right. thing that happens on that moon. Uh, and he starts setting up for the for everything going. The only other person who's currently in the bridge is Anna. She is the pilot of the ship. Uh, she is sort of setting everything up, making... She's basically doing what you guys did again, like, but on a much more like, you know, test firing to, to go sort of thing. Checking the room, doing a couple of like pre preliminary calculations and things because piloting is a lot of maths, uh, ultimately, and three dimensional thinking. Uh, but she's she's just sort of like she's nursing a coffee that is fresh, but it's probably powder that they add you add hot water to. Um, I know yeah. if that's. <laughs> That's my feeling. Your chance to get good, to get better coffee was like over there, but even then it wouldn't be great. 
And she's, I, I literally knew somebody in real life that preferred instant coffee. Like, no, 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 it's the best. And I'm like, did you, did you excommunicate them? Well, uh, technically, I yes, because it was an ex girlfriend's dad. But either way, <laughs> if you if you come in and complain about that to uh, to her, she's like, I know, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> and then we proceed to make one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then you proceed to make one. And I, I actually, I was. I have tea. I, I will say there is a, a <laughs> shitty little coffee machine in the bridge for just this reason. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Straight in there. You so <laughs> much need it. Uh, and yeah, you actually had very much, you're probably one of the next people on the bridge, Jason, other than getting breakfast, and this ship has breakfast, or you could go and get some from the station. I'm not going to trouble you. I'm not going to make you do any sort of rolls for it. Is that um, you. It would be you because you are the communications officer on the ship and leaving a dock is your duty. You do most of the work. You actually start immediately doing like requests to leave, all that sort of thing. This kind of dock is, it's mostly automated and honestly you could just press one button, but you, I imagine, much prefer doing things a little more manually uh, than just doing- like, He doesn't leave. sit down, he stands there holding his coffee, pushes a button and waits as it like tones, waiting for someone to answer it. Hey, hey there. Yeah, we're, uh, we're uh, ready to head out in about 20 minutes and uh i'll give you another buzz all right magpie we will be uh message received thank you uh, and have a good morning and you can clearly tell the person on the other side is in the same mood as you <laughs> awesome the the rest of you on the ship you know you don't so much need to uh be here right now so what are you doing as you're praying to leave you can be in the bridge you probably are in the bridge most of the time but I am very much still in bed, probably like hugging the guitar, like a bit of drool out of the corner of the mouth, still completely dead to the world. All right. I'm I'm probably in our our room and just organizing my tools and stuff like that. Mm. But like when I say organize, to me it's organized. Someone else walks in here, it's a complete mess. It's oh, yeah. utter yeah. chaos. There's stuff hanging. It's just just garbage but i'm like oh yeah these screws these these seven screws are right here and this is right here it's just like his his area of like the crew quarters has like a bunch of shelves that no one else has it's like the worst engineer, part is it's dad it's that is, dad's that workbench our father. <laughs> it's fucking dead he's like he, he was i literally spent this past weekend with him and he was like you know what i've been doing lately because you know you take a lot more medications as you get older and you get these huge bottles full of pills those are the best place for holding screws you know what i'm saying so just grab it and i, I know which one it is the blue bottles for this kind of screw that and then that way you don't have them in the bottom of your work bag you just get this bottle and you always go in to get the guy i'm like that's dad <laughs> So while yep. you're looking at him being your dad, you know, the reactor in the ship properly fires up to being in sort of like idle, you know, everything else to being, you know, we're about to leave. The ship has this nice rhythmic sort of humming. There's, there's, to, to most of you who are more used to being in space, being in, the, the sensation of like your ship yeah, is about to move. <laughs> I've already got it playing. I've already got a warm. Oh, beautiful. Uh, it is... It is very calming, just the repetitiveness of the engine, of the reactor working, and then the engine noise is is also very calming. I imagine to Thomas, it is because the engine will also be starting up, but like in in like a low burn. So then when you release it, it just goes. Super important question. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, artificial gravity or no? And now I was gonna say yes. There's artificial gravity, but in in your ship, it is sort of famously unreliable. So artificial gravity exists in general, but it's it's like half uh, pressure based as well as being like gravity plating. Like the, the artificial gravity tech doesn't exist perfectly, like in Star Trek or something. You also have air pushing down on you a little bit, so that when you are doing stuff, it, it's a lot easier. So like Corbu Station has some spin to it, to help with that. Bigger ships don't have this problem so much because your ship's so small, it can't sort of uh, uh, even it out. So. So, so we rely on mag boots to, uh, you to get around comfortably? You don't rely on mag boots, but it is... So, like, just walking around, sure. But you would have your mag boots on all the time, just in case. Like, Because, well, you know, walking in mag boots is very different than just walking, right? Yes. The but, like, you have, you have gravity on the ship, but you yeah. might lose gravity on the ship. It's not comparable to real gravity. Okay, yep, gotcha. Okay, cool. Everything, you, you are always going to fall downwards, 
Uh, but you you know if you lose atmosphere, you lose gravity at the same time. So you, you're giving the, the, the stereotypical DM answer, yes, but when, no. But, but yeah, but I already thought about it. Yeah. No, 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 I know. Yes, but when, no. Yes, but when, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. um, I guess when the engine starts, I would probably move up to go speak to the captain. Oh, so where are we going? And I wouldn't see the sign. Well, you know, we're going to we're going to Shield, which means we're going to Quartos, and then we're gonna we're fuel up. And then we're gonna go. Shield. We're going slow again. Ah, oh, how long are you gonna be on Shield? I mean, that's a good question. I I say, I mean. Uh, let's say we stop there for at least a few days. We can work it out while we're there. Maybe get a little bit of boots on the ground, relax. Uh, mm. I don't think I'm going to need to talk to people that much. I mean, most of it I've already done on a vid call, but... Yeah, yeah well, I just want to do some work to the ship, and it, that's a good spot to do it, seeing as it's where it's from. Yeah, I mean, we always get a nice spot when we waste in there, when we, when we stop in S.H.I.E.L.D., so it'll be great. It'll be fine. But Perfect. We, we, our job isn't, isn't going to be in S.H.I.E.L.D., so don't worry about okay. it, Jason. It'll be fine. And uh, we're going slow. We're not doing any sort of crazy maneuvers. You're all going to want to strap down for the punch. But after that, you know, we're going to have a few days of just smooth flying. Hopefully, hopefully, and like calls over to Anna, who just middle finger. <laughs> and then, unless you have anything else to... Is nope. everyone on the bridge at the moment? or because I'm gonna but, Everyone but Rain and uh, Davis, where are you... No, I'm definitely. I would definitely be on the bridge, just because that's where. It's it's where you should at. be when you're. <laughs> so, f fully aware that it's only rain, not on the bridge. Uh, Jason's gonna flick flick the uh, shipwide tannoy. Hi there, guys. Can all crew members report to the bridge? Can all crew members report to the bridge, please? No matter what state of hangover you're in. And the thing is, <laughs> it's loud crack. and it's crackly. <laughs> You hear her crashes, she clearly rolls over and falls out of bed. Yeah, it is below you, because uh, her room's like, over oh, there I am. And a, and a couple of you just hear like a... Uh, <sighs> after he cancels it and he hears a crash. Oh, I'll be, I'll be with you in a minute, Jason. You, you like, yell. <laughs> yeah. Ah! <laughs> Good stuff. So after, like you said, around 20 minutes, you go ahead and give a little, uh, a lot of these sort of handshake things. You don't need to call now. Especially, you didn't really need to earlier, but it, no. it's polite. It, it's better to. You just basically give a, I'm going. They give a, you're allowed to go. They release stuff on their end. And, and it's, it's sort of like a two-step a two -step process when you do these handshakes. It's they like do, a handshake. They, they, exactly. You both need to agree to releasing the clamps. And they release the clamps on the ship. And you just start a very... Uh, slow drift away whereas Anna is uh, not doing what that other ship did earlier where they just fly over the buildings uh, they was less built you can kind of see the buildings from outside kind of because of the way that the station is designed but starts heading off kind of more towards the asteroid belt uh, of the system but you are aware that the direction she's traveling in doesn't exactly matter right now but she's pointing towards uh, quarters and then you all start to strap down for the uh, mm -hmm. for the punch drill. Now, uh, what's that, Scott? I, I because that's I think the only detail that we don't have on the ship's part of our sheets because I was looking that over earlier. One. Um, the speed is three. So is our what's our our drive? Drive is one. Oh, okay, I wasn't drive sure. Drive is one, were... and any higher than that is kind of rare. Okay. Uh, in okay, general. Cool. Gotcha. But, but we can still, there's still ways to jerry rig to get higher than you, that. No, but you can essentially. No. They aren't in the rules. You can act as if you're faster than that. You can't go higher than that. But I am not, you don't have to stick strictly to the rudders in, in my ruling of it. You can kind of try and hop through space in a couple of jumps, but it'd be really shit, and the pilot wouldn't want to do it. Um, no, but I mean, if you had like they that focus, or if you got oh, like, I mean, if you had the actual, if you had the actual abilities to do it, then okay, yes. that's okay, but not cool. not as a not as a beep, 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 I can do it. But so if we see somebody that like is catching up like that, it's not gonna be like, <gasps> what is this crazy technology? You know, it, that like that wouldn't be no, like, no, uh, and, and you can make your ship fly faster. Yeah, uh, yeah if you're cool. seeing the map, basically what a what a drive one means, you can only hop in once. And another thing about the ship, it doesn't have a fuel bunker. You can only hop and then refuel, but it has a fuel yeah. scoop. 
Uh, yep. I, 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 for this kind of ship, it doesn't really matter most of the time. Um, you're also flying slow. You can travel a lot faster. Punches don't necessarily matter about physical space so much. Yep. So uh, you're rarely going to worry about being sort of chased through while, while you're punching. But so in the situations is a two it has... Jump journey for us. This is a two-jump journey. You're going to jump to quarters and then you're going to jump to pike. Cool. So then, then I suppose that tangent to another question. Uh, fuel scope, how long does it take to uh, reload? It's in the book. But you're not oh, going to... You're, you're not... Yeah, but you're not going to fuel scoop. You're going to read. I haven't had to do that. You, you cool. usually... If, because these are all very uh, civilized systems. These, these are four systems... Drawing from Novus, Quartus, and Pike. They are so easy to travel between. It's just so much easier to just fly there, refuel, and leave, and mm -hmm. save time. Because you're also going to be flying slow, because there's no real reason to go faster. But, like, sure, sure. wasting time fuel scooping is kind of like... It's, it's wasting time in this situation. And Mickey has no... Time is money. Time is money. But it's not worth trying to... Uh, punch faster because that has dangers in, involved and stuff. But she, Anna can do it when you need to, and you definitely did it when you were had the hounds on board because you didn't want to have those hounds on board for much longer. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So, cool, cool. All of you strap down because the initial punch, which is why I call it a punch drive in, in book, it's a spike drive. It is a. It feels like you're getting punched. Your chairs all have strapping, uh, uh, they all have strapping young individuals in them. <laughs> and also, they allow you to strap down, they, you all get ready. It, it's, you've done it a bunch of times so much you're not so stressed about it, unless some of, some people get some punch anxiety because, you know, you're about to go incredibly, incredibly, incredibly fast through space. And- You know, it's Jason down his coffee before <laughs> locking it yep. in. Yeah. <sighs> I imagine it's one of those like nerves always settle in no matter how many times. It's like the the flight stewardess that yeah. doesn't matter how many times she flies on a plane, she always gets a little bit queasy. And so I imagine my, my character goes through the typical ritual like, where is it? Okay, let's see if I'm here and then make sure. All right. And then this is, oh, yep, this is sit over here where I need Check it. Check all your buckles. And, okay. And we are, and it's one of those like literally like right before we punch, it'll be like an inhale. I'll look over to the, um, to the, the, the pilot. For, sorry, the, the pilot, the comms officer, for like a, an extra like second or two, and give like a little nod, and then just kind of like lean back into the chair. <sighs> exactly, you lean back in preparation, and Anna's like, and away we go, and it's a big, it's a big pull down leather, crank, uh, and uh, and it's like a, poof, everything goes incredibly. St it's only for a couple of moments where you feel the change from normal to insane. But then after that moment, it's it's fine. You actually even know, uh, uh, Neil, it was good to get Rain up here because otherwise you would have had to strap her down to her bed at, for safety reasons, for safety regulations, which is, all these beds are designed for because if you you might be jumping during like night shift or something. Yeah. Can, can we make Rain make an exert check because you know she's hungover? No. Uh, I do <laughs> oh, have. Yeah, I do have be some. Bad, uh, going into punch on uh, while you're hungover. I do have some mild uh, homebrew for like if you weren't strapped down and stuff like that. Rain, it's terrible. You die. You definitely, you definitely. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I You've made me change my mind. Give me an exert check. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, I, I thought about it a little bit more and I liked it. <laughs> okay. Um, what save. Exert save. No, no. Exert uh, check. Constitution. There we go. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I don't have a dice set up. I like seeing the dice myself. You, uh, as soon as, like, there's the, uh, even the light, this ship is old, like, the lights flicker when you punch, and they go, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then it, like, your chairs will allow you to unlock, and they'll be, like, sort of, like, a dee dee, and, like, as soon as that, you're, like, bathroom, bathroom, very <laughs> quickly, uh, to, uh, void everything you've eaten in the last couple of days. Yeah, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna role play already, I was gonna be, like, when, when it happens, she's, like, <laughs> and uh, out with bar. rain staring down the toilet bowl, why don't we go ahead and take our first break? Well, that took coffee's made me thirsty for a coffee. Go get a coffee, because you're in for a long ride. Yeah, that.